All right, let's talk the theory of perspective. Before we begin, we really have to just look at our world and pare it down into some basic terminology. For starters, let's start by assuming we have a horizon. And let's also assume that here you are, looking cool. You got some shoes. You've got a handbag, whatever. And most importantly, you have eyeballs. The primary way that you experience the world. Now we're going to call these a couple things. Number one, <clears throat> let's call this spot right here where you're standing the station point. And the station point is important because it's going to be where we start off by thinking about everything. Now, we also are going to assume that you are six feet tall. And that doesn't have to be that. What if you're three feet tall? Or what if you're one foot tall? What if you used a magic potion and you shrank down to a centimeter? What if you're actually standing on a 1,000 foot mountain? In that case, it would be... 1,006 feet tall from the station point. But that doesn't really matter. For now we're just going to assume that this is 6 feet tall and we hit this point where we have the viewer. And the viewer is really what we think of when we think of our eyeballs. So we're going to call this the viewer. And we could also call it things like the viewpoint Or, if you want to be fancier and more elegant, you could call it the painter. Or, or, or artist. Now what's important about this is uh, a couple things. First off, again, assume that we put this viewpoint up six feet. If suddenly a mountain grew up, uh, you would be a thousand and six feet. Let's say he's standing on a second story of a building. That's going to make him six feet plus, however tall, a second story building is. Now coming out from this, kind of like Cyclops, shooting a laser blast from his eyes of kinetic energy, we have a ray. And we're going to assume that this is like Tron. And this ray is traveling infinitely without any curve. And also that the ground is also traveling infinitely without any curve. Now normally, if you were uh, going to do this, imagine you're standing here on the earth. The way this works is, yeah, for a long time, these two lines are going to appear to be parallel. And then we eventually see the curvature of the earth. But that's so far off that for 99% of purposes, we can assume that these two lines are parallel, exactly next to each other. <clears throat> We're also assuming that this viewpoint is never going to look up or down. Eventually it will. Uh, it's never going to look uh, left or right, although that doesn't matter because if you looked left or right, your Cyclops Blast would go that way. So we're going to assume he's right there. Now the next thing we need to assume is that <clears throat> there's a series of posts on the ground, perhaps. Maybe they're uh, road markers or something. And there's one right here by your foot. Put a little guide for myself in this light yellow. And these posts happen every 10 feet or so. Remember, the station point, or uh, the viewer is 6 feet tall. And that really is going to be our unit of measurement for everything. So if I assume that it's like that about from here to here. Oh, pardon me. If I assume it's this tall, I can turn that on its side and assume that it's going to start around here. And these go straight up and touch this. And let's assume these go every once in a while like that. 
And these can actually go on and on and on. And on and on and on and on. Now why do we care about these posts? Well, we care about them because they're going to tell us something about how our brain interprets what we look at. First off, assume that there were some things up here. And maybe one's a Q. Maybe one's a circle. Maybe one up here. This is a really hideous cone. Well, the theory of perspective is that as visible rays enter your eyeball, imagine there was a plane of glass that you were looking at these through, much like you're looking out a window. Now, when you have that plane of glass, you can start to notice something. If I drew this to represent our pane of glass, the ratios are going to maintain as they go up and down this. So right here, this is uh, about uh, three times that. This space is their biggest chunk. So this is our biggest chunk here. And this is our smallest one. Way down here, if we drew our pane of glass through here instead, all of a sudden, this is still going to be the smallest. And this is also still going to be the smallest or the biggest. It's not perfect because I'm just hand drawing these lines, but you get the idea. As this line travels up and down here, that ratio is going to be maintained. So what about these posts? Let's say our posts are what we're looking at with this pane of glass. This one is going from here to our eyeball. And so is that one. And so is this one. And quickly, I'm running out of room. Let's say they also are way out here. Even way out here. This is not a big distance we're traveling, right? I mean, if you turned that man on his side, <clears throat> if you turned our viewer on his side so we could judge how much he's gone, he's only, from here to here, about six feet tall. So times that by this. Right here. This is only about... Uh, you know, 100 feet over here, something like that. We could use a ruler to double check. In fact, let's do that. So this guy is about two uh, squares long, so that's 6 feet, 12 feet, 18 feet, 24 feet. So yeah, when this one would converge way over here, that's only I don't know, 45 feet. Okay, so point is, let's say we have all these visible rays going way off into the distance. If we did that plane of glass cut, in fact, let's create a secondary row. So the secondary row is going to be for the tops of this. So what you would start to notice if you cut this <clears throat> is that this area right here, this is a big ratio. And as we go, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And again, there might be some microscopic evidence. But so this is only... so. The space for just this little six foot gap is pretty huge. And once we get past 40 degrees or, you know, 40 feet or so, it ends up being really close for all of these. 
So the way this ends up getting represented on a drawing is let's say we have our horizon. The way we would view these posts <clears throat> is something like this. So the further back they get, they're almost invisible. They all start to converge at what's called the principal vanishing point. Which brings us to our next topic.